Hi, I'm Mark Cherry, creator and executive producer of Desperate Housewives. And this is... I'm Kyle McLaughlin. And we're going to be answering questions submitted by you for ABC.com. I almost feel like a farmer who raises cattle. I do a chicken thing. Yeah. That is very... If you could take Desperate Housewives to film abroad, which country would you go to and why? What a good question. <laughs> I've never, ever, ever thought of taking this show outside of America. I feel that the whole, you know, milieu is really necessary for telling these stories. But if I had to, I would probably take them on a vacation spot, probably, you know, something tropical like Hawaii, which is still the United States. Just see the Desperate Housewives on vacation, maybe, I guess. But... I mean, do you think Orson would end up going to Hawaii, too, with, the, with the, all the women in Desperate Housewives? I, think he um, I, guess, he, I guess he's going to have to. <laughs> he has to go now. You've been nice enough to get up this early to do this, so yeah, I'll take you to Hawaii. Did you audition for the role of Orson? What was that like? Aha! Uh -huh. All my life, I've been auditioning for the role of Orson. I feel like this moment at this time is what everything that I've done has come to. Uh, no, Mark called and asked if I would love to join the cast, and I was so excited, I, I said yes. I actually broke a rule for Kyle. I broke my own rule because I was never, ever going to use any of the guys from Sex and the City because I'm such a fan of that show, and I thought that would be too weird and stuff. But... He was the perfect one for the part, and finally I went, okay, I'm just going to break this rule. We'll just do it this one time. So what's funny is I've had other agents for guys uh, on th that show call, and I'm like, no, I have Kyle. That's, uh, I can't do any more. Will Bob and Lee ever have a child? I've actually been thinking about that. They were supposed to have one this year, and we didn't have time for it, but I think I will make the adoption of a child a big part of next year's storyline. So it's been something that's been in the back of my head. So that's a good question. What do all of the apples symbolize. The apples came about as a result of the main title sequence that we put in the show the very first season and it ran for a couple until ABC suggested that we needed more story time so they made me take it out. And what I said to the people who created our main title sequence is I wanted to use paintings and imagery to kind of trace women throughout history and to make the point that there have been desperate housewives since time began and that you know the word desperate housewives really applied to a certain kind of woman that has always existed. And so we decided that the very first Desperate Housewife was Eve, who had gotten the apple. And so the apple just became kind of a symbol of, you know, desperation for women. And uh, we've used it ever since. Who would you like to see Orson have an affair with? Ah! Boy, Mrs. McCluskey would be pretty interesting, don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> That's pushing it. At this seat. My, my next my question. <laughs> no, no, no. No, I, I, Catherine Houston would be an interesting woman to put into an affair, and I've often thought of having Mrs. McCluskey do some kind of affair with some older gentleman on the lane. But I think that if we're going to put Orson in, I would want to have you with someone who would unlock some kind of primal thing in you. Oh, that could be very interesting. So I'm thinking well, Eva. I'm Eva, thinking it. Well, it could be very well. You know, Eva's fantastic. I adore her. I think the one time we were talking maybe Dana at one point. We were thinking about Dana, yeah. but then we hooked her up with Mike. Right, right, so, right, right. so yeah, sorry. I wasn't, I wasn't quick enough. Who is the funniest off screen? Me. <laughs> Look, if you're, gonna, if you're gonna lie to Jen, I can't just sit here. Uh, you can't just sit and do that. I think Eva's are probably the funniest off screen. The thing that's great about Eva is her, her laugh just makes me laugh. I mean, it's, it's, it's adorable. It's, she, yeah. You know, and you can hear it from about two miles away. I mean, it's fantastic. Doug Savant's pretty funny, too. Doug's very humorous. Yeah. We've had the good fortune to have a lot of really just funny, charming people, and, and our, it makes our set a very happy place. It's a great place. It's a great place to visit. Come on by. Do you get nervous before filming any specific kinds of scenes? Which are the hardest? Mm, not really, not here. The only time I get nervous is maybe the first day. I remember coming on at the end of season two and wanting to, you know, kind of fit in and pick up the right energy, and I was nervous about that. But um, there are some scenes where preparation is different, you know, if it's going to be more of an emotional scene. Um, or something where you're... Topless. Or something where you're topless, where you spend a little bit of extra time, you know, on the treadmill. That's something I have to do when writing the show. If we ever put an actor in a scene where they're going to be exposing a lot of skin, I have to give them warning. And I inevitably tell Doug Savant, oh, you're going to be topless about two days before he shoots. And he gets really angry at me. So, sorry, Doug. <laughs>
This is Mark Cherry, creator of Desperate Housewives. And Kyle McLaughlin. And we are so happy to have some time with you and answer your questions for ABC.com. Remember to watch Desperate Housewives on ABC, Sunday nights at 9. And 8 Central. <laughs> that was a good pause.